Hello students, welcome to another tutorial on mechanical properties of matter. In this video, we introduce the concept of shear modulus. And then after that, we see how to apply those concepts to work out the question I left you, I left you with in the previous video. Now, shear modulus just kind of relates, uh, it, it looks at how an object stretches, the elasticity of a material really, in terms of its shape. So if I was to draw one face of, uh, of a cube, which is just a square, and then this face or this, this object is uh, under the influence of, uh, of a shearing force or uh, just a force that is trying to, uh, that, that is ap uh, applied on it. Now this force, of course, if this object is, uh, is on, on, a, on a surface, like let's say a table, or the ground, what we observe is right on the on, on the bottom, the base will also experience an opposing force, which will act in that direction, kind of just gripping the base to the ground. Now, what happens is the two forces are, of course, equal in magnitude. The only difference is in their direction. Now, what happens is um, this force right on the top, it kind of shifts that top part of the of the object, it shifts its forward some distance, uh, change in x. So uh, let's let's say change in l. So it moves the object some distance, change in l. Okay. Now, if let's say the object initially was had let's say a, a, a displacement, or let's say this side was of length l, and then the top part has been shifted so that it is it has moved some distance, change in l. What we observe is the object kind of shifts in that direction so that it has been sheared forward. So if we now extend this to mean a cube, a, a, cube, a, a, a three dimensional shape. So what we are seeing now is something like this. Okay, so let's draw this better. Okay, now, uh, of course, when we sketch through um, how it has been shared, what you're seeing is something like this. Okay, so this is just a sketch of what is happening. Now, what we're trying to just highlight here is this shift going forward, this change in L. This is what is uh, what we kind of want to what we want to track. Now, right on the top part, right on the top part, what we have is this area of interest. Now, notice that this area will always be um, parallel to the force. In other words, this is the area that we use when we want to calculate that uh, the, the shearing stress. So this is where we get our area A. Now, notice that in the previous, um, the previous questions, where we looked at, um, uh, stress strain in Young's modulus, the area and the force were kind of perpendicular. But in this case, the area and the force are kind of parallel. So the force will always act at a tangent to this surface. So when calculating the area, it's this surface here, I'm using blue for that. So it is the area of this surface here that you always want to, that you always want to use. So this is the, the cross-sectional area that you want to use. Okay, now, how do, we, how do we bring in everything? So of course, uh, when this face moves forward, there'll always be this angle here, we're going to call it phi. Now, in terms, of, uh, in terms of shear modulus, first of all, we have the shearing um, stress, which is going to be given by the force applied divided by the parallel area. So again, the force in the area uh, more like the force is tangential to that to that area. Okay, and then apart from this, just as we saw in the previous section, so the, the shearing strain is going to be given by, but in this case now, what we have to use is that change in L. So maybe when we use change in L, it might be confusing. You might think it's the elongation as we saw previously. Let's say change in X. 
so that the symbol, the X here and the L are not really, really similar. So when it comes to, to the sharing strain, what we have is the change in X divided by that dimension L or of the object. So this is what gives the, the strain in terms of, uh, in, terms of, in terms of, that is what gives the strain in terms of this case. Now, when it comes to the shear modulus S, of course, what we're going to do is the stress, it's the stress divided by the strain. Now, of course, this is the formula that we're going to use. And then if we simplify this, this becomes F, L O divided by the cross section, of the, the area itself, multiplying the change in X. So this is uh, how we express the shear modulus. Now, there's one simple thing that um, I'd like to just point out for you guys, something that you have to keep in mind. Now, because we're going to deal with solids in this section, what you have to keep in mind is whenever a force is applied um, and then it shifts the, uh, this part, some distance change in X. What you have to realize is that shift is actually very, very small. In fact, the angle here, the phi here, it's a very, very small angle, such that if you say turn this angle, and then of course by trigonometry, you guys should see that turn and this angle here, since that is 90 degrees, is going to be equals to this over over LO. So turn this angle here, since the angle is very, very small, turn a very small angle is approximately equal to that same angle. So in this case, when we have uh, tan pi is equivalent to this, we approximate that this is actually approximately equal to just the angle. So this approximation is made when the angle in, in question is very, very small, and when the change in X, that shear, that stretch that you're dealing with, when it is very, very small, then this approximation holds. Okay, so of course, um, one other thing that you might, you might want to keep in mind, also sign a very, very small angle can also be approximated to, to give uh, just that very, very small angle. Now, now another thing that you, you can just, uh, just keep in mind is, with these conditions to say the change in X is very, very small. Now it, it kind of uh, behaves as if the, the object is rotating about this point such that that change in X behaves as if it is the arc length. So of course, from our discussion of rotational motion, um, arc length is given by just uh, the product of the radius divided by are multiplying the angle. So in this case, for changing X very, very small, that becomes the arc length, then this is equals to R uh, divided by multiplying the, the angle theta. But in this case, the radius is our LO, and then the angle, of course, is our phi, implying that we can get our phi if we divide into changing X that LO. This expression gives us our angle phi. But of course, this is for when the change in X is very, very small. Okay, so but notice that this equation, of course, is exactly what we get when we make the approximation for, for tan phi. The two are actually the same. So now let's quickly see if we can apply these concepts to the this to this question. So you guys can pause the video and try to work it out on your own. But then um, yeah, let's try to try to work it out and see if you'll be able to find uh, to find the answers which I expected. Okay, now um, what are you supposed to do? So basically, we're using um, the formula for shear modulus. So what we have is a shear modulus is equal to um, force multiplying that L O, and then this is divided by the change in X multiplying the area. So we're given all these quantities except that change in x. That's what we want to find. So we make that change in x the subject of the formula. And what we have is L, F multiplying L, O, the shear modulus multiplying the cross sectional area. And then from here, what we have is the force that's 4,000. So the length 
uh, the length of this object is given as 25 centimeters. So 25 centimeters and meters, this becomes 25 by 10 to the power negative two meters. So that's what we're going to use. So that is 25 by 10 to the power negative two. We divide this by the shear modulus is given in the question, that's 0 0.8 by 10 to the power 11. So then we multiply this by the cross-sectional area. So the, the, the area here, not really the cross-sectional, just the area of um, that face of the cube, which is parallel to the force. Um, so of course, it's just L squared. So L squared gives us that area. So that is going to be 25 by 10 to the power negative two squared. So if we work it out from here, we see that what we get is going to be 2.0 by 10 to the power negative seven uh, meters. So that is, uh, that is a change in X. So what we see is this value is very, very small, implying that our approximations are going to hold. So we have tan phi is equal to, so just as we saw earlier on, it's uh, what we're looking at is something like this. So our change in X is here, our LO is here. This is where our phi is. So when we say tan phi, we're saying this is opposite over adjacent, which is LO. So this becomes tan phi is equal to the change in X. So just from seeing it, that's seven by 10 to the, uh, not seven. So this is, um, this is two, two by, 10 to the power negative seven. This is divided by that length, which is 25 by 10 to the power negative two. So this comes to give us tan phi is equal to, so this is going to be eight by 10 to the power negative, um, negative seven. And this is going to be approximately equal to uh, angle phi, since of course our approximation holds the change in X is very, very small, and meaning the angle is also very, very small. So the angle that we want is phi, which is approximately equal to eight by 10 to the power negative seven. So one key thing that you guys have to keep in mind is when you're using these approximations, the angle that you get is going to have units of radians, okay? All right, so um, you guys, uh, I hope you found this video helpful, otherwise, um, yeah, in our next session, we're going to work out another easy question. So you guys can try this question out in advance and then uh, let's see what you find. Otherwise, hope you found this helpful. If you want to join any of my live sessions, you can of course get in touch with me using my the email in the description. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in there in the next session. This was your tutor.